This is the second video in an instructional series on the Seismic Mitigation Program. In this video, we will provide a brief overview of eligibility requirements for the Seismic Mitigation Program, as well as the Division of the State Architects process. Eligibility for the Seismic Mitigation Program is determined by the Division of the State Architect, also known as the DSA. For detailed information on DSA forms, processes, procedures, or additional questions pertaining to the DSA application process, please contact the DSA. An excellent resource for understanding the DSA process is their Procedure 0803. Within this document, you'll be able to find the most updated Seismic Mitigation Program contact information for the DSA. This document can be found at www documents.dgs.ca.gov forward slash DSA forward slash PUBS forward slash PR underscore 08 PDF. Districts who wish to apply for the Seismic Mitigation Program would start by first confirming that their facilities meet the basic requirements. These include that the building was originally designed for occupancy by students and staff, that the building is considered a Category 2 building type. This refers to the building's structural system. We'll talk about this more in a minute. The next requirement is that there's potential for the building to collapse during a seismic event. This could include ground shaking, faulting, liquefaction, or landslide events. And the last qualifying criteria is that if construction for the facility has already begun or been completed, the construction contract has to have been executed on or after May 20th of 2006. This date relates to the inception of the program. Now back to the discussion on Category 2 building types. The list you see here is all of the eligible Category 2 building types. This list can be found on the DSA Procedure 0803 in Section 1, which is on page 2 of 13. If your facility meets all of these qualifying conditions, then the next step would be to have a licensed design professional complete the eligibility evaluation report by the DSA. The DSA calls each of their steps of the review process phases and the Eligibility Evaluation Report is considered Phase 1. The exact procedures for this step can be found on pages 1 through 3 of the Procedure 0803. For ease of use, the DSA has created a template that applicants can use to create this report and hyperlinked the report on page 1, Section 1 of the PR 0803. If you click on that hyperlink, the Eligibility Evaluation Report template will open in the form of a Word document and will be ready for your use. Depending on if the facility is being replaced, which is considered Phase 2, or repaired, which is Phase 3, the district will go down one of two paths to continue the review process at the DSA. Detailed information on these steps and the requirements for each can be found in sections 2 through 4 of the DSA Procedure 0803. If you have any questions on the application or evaluation process, please contact your DSA Regional Office directly. After the DSA has confirmed eligibility and approved all phases of your project, the district can then apply for funding from the Office of Public School Construction. This process is evaluated farther in the next videos of this series. Thank you for watching this video on the eligibility evaluation process for the Seismic Mitigation Program and the DSA process. Please watch the next videos in this series to learn more.